In this CompTIA a crash course, we're diving deep into the nuts and bolts of computers. From input devices and peripherals to motherboards, RAM slots, printers, cooling systems, storage types, power supplies, and even troubleshooting mobile and laptop issues. Whether you're aiming to pass the A-plus exam or build a rock-solid foundation in it, this is your first step into the tech world. One of the most basic input devices on a computer is a keyboard. A keyboard is a device used to input commands to the computer. It has keys that are made up of alphabets, numbers, and symbols that you can press with your fingers. The most basic function of a keyboard is to do things like word processing, write letters, emails, visit web pages, and so on. Keyboards come equipped with two different connector types. There is the older 6-pin D connector, which has pretty much become obsolete. And there's also the modern USB connector. Many keyboards support both connectors by including a D2 USB adapter, allowing use with any computer that has a D or USB port. Now, let us look at a mouse and what it does. A mouse is another basic input device that is used on a computer. It is a pointing device that fits in the palm of your hand and replicates the movement of the mouse onto the computer screen. It is used for things like starting applications, file and folder management, and surfing the internet. A mouse will typically have one or two buttons. A Macintosh mouse will have one button, while a Windows mouse will have at least two buttons. A digital camera is a device that takes digital pictures and videos. Unlike standard cameras, where the images are stored on film, a digital camera stores the images on an internal hard drive or on a camera's SD card. Once the images are stored, they can then be downloaded to a computer by using a USB cable or an SD card. And then once they're on the computer, the images can be viewed or printed. A barcode reader is a device that is used for reading barcodes. It uses light to scan barcodes, and it's typically used to detect point-off sales and maintain inventory. It can connect to a computer through a serial port, USB port, or a wireless connection. Barcode readers can come in several forms, but the most popular is the handheld trigger type. A scanner is a device that enables you to put a digital copy of a physical copy on your computer. For instance, if you have a photo or a document and you now want to put a digital image of that photo or document on your computer, well that's what a scanner enables you to do. Scanners would typically have a flatbed where you can place the photo or document face down. And at the press of a button it will scan it for you. And as the scanner moves across the document or photo, it saves the image to your computer. Scanners will typically come in a combination with a printer, or you can also purchase a scanner all by itself. A touchscreen is an LCD monitor with that hazened input detection system. It is a grid that senses a touch by a finger. It works the same way as if you were using a mouse, but without the mouse itself, because you are using your finger in instead. The touch screen receives a touch in the same way as if you were clicking a mouse button. Typically, one click on the mouse button equals one tap by a finger, and two clicks of the mouse button equals two taps by your finger. Touch screens are commonly used in Aliwan computers and tablets such as the iPad. And they're also used on certain phones with touchscreen technology. A webcam is a device that is used for capturing video and images. Webcams are mainly used for video conferencing and video calling over the internet. So, any two people in the world can visually communicate with each other if they both have a webcam and an internet connection. 
and most webcams have a built-in microphone to capture audio. A webcam connects to a computer typically through a USB cable. Webcams are often used with messaging applications such as Skype for making visual calls, and two of the biggest manufacturers of webcams are Microsoft and Logitech. A media card reader gives the computer the ability to read memory cards from devices such as cameras. It is a small device that usually has a USB cable attached at one end that connects to a computer. And then the body of the reader has slots to accommodate various sizes of memory cards. For example, micro SD and mini SD cards. And then once installed, the data from the memory cards can be read and transferred to the computer. A docking station is used for laptop computers. It is a device that is used for basically turning your laptop into virtually a desktop computer. We all know that laptops are generally smaller than desktops. For instance, on the laptop, the monitor and keyboard are generally small. So, if you wanted to use your laptop at your desk, and you wanted to use a bigger monitor and keyboard, you can simply set the laptop in the docking station. And it will automatically connect to them and use them depending on what is already plugged into the docking station. Whether it's a monitor, keyboard, mouse, printer, etc. It eliminates the hassle of connecting all these individually. You simply attach and then start using them instantly. But there's one thing to remember about docking stations is that they are specific to the manufacturer. So, there is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all docking station. You need to get the specific one for the laptop. A KVM switch allows you to control multiple computers from a single monitor, keyboard and mouse. A KVM is typically a box with ports for a video, mouse, and keyboard. Each computer has its own individual cable connections to the KVM. Each KVM has buttons that you can press so that you can switch to a different computer you want to control. KVMs also come in different sizes depending on how many computers the KVM can handle. A low-end KVM switch will have the ability to control two computers, while a higher-end KVM can control eight computers. KVMs are handy when you want to control multiple computers without the need for a dedicated monitor, keyboard and mouse for each one. This not only saves money, but it also saves space. A lot of TVs today are smart TVs. A smart TV is a television where you can not only watch TV, but you can also connect to the internet. So, basically, it's a television combined with a computer. And when it's connected to the internet, you can go to web pages, stream movies, and television shows. You can also interact with other people across the internet by using video messaging services such as Skype, because a lot of smart TVs will also have a built in webcam and microphone. One way to prove the identity of a person is by using a smart card. A smart card is a good choice to prove your identity because you always have to have it with you when proving your identification. A smart card is the same size as a credit card with an embedded microprocessor chip. And a smart card reader is a device that is used to accept and read smart cards. A biometric device is used to prove the identity of a person by recognizing their unique physical characteristics. An example of a biometric device is a fingerprint scanner. These days, many fingerprint scanners have been built into devices such as laptops and smartphones. You just swipe your finger across the fingerprint scanner and the scanner will either grant or deny you access based on your fingerprint. Another type of input device is a motion sensor. A motion sensor records your hand movement in midair without making any physical contact with a device. 
A motion sensor would also typically connect to your computer using a USB cable. A digitizer is a device that is used to convert analog movement, such as a hand drawing, and convert it into a digital form on your computer. A digitizer will have a flat surface like a tablet with a stylus. And as you draw on the flat surface using the stylus, it will record the image from the stylus and process the drawing on your computer screen. It connects to your computer using a USB cable. Other input devices include gamepads and joysticks. These are controllers that you would use for gaming systems such as Xboxes and Playstations. But you can also use these for computers, and if you're going to use these with a computer, they would typically connect using a USB connection. This brings us to the end of the video on input devices. This video is part of our full Comp TAA Plus course, which can be found in the description. So, please feel free to go and check that out. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video on output devices.